So now that we've got the assets uh, brought into our project that we needed, let's start actually building this out. Now, again, I'm gonna say, you don't have to build your obstacle course exactly like mine. If you want it in space, that's great. Don't add a terrain plane, Add a, find a space skybox, that would be fine. If you wanna have skyscrapers around you, that's great. If you want it to be kind of uh, hopping up out of a volcano or something, that's great too. Just, you know, don't feel like you just have to clone um, whatever I do. But uh, let me start by getting a um, terrain plane in, in the game here. So let me add um, a 3D game object. That'll be uh, terrain. Or I could just add a plane. My ground is going to be flat. Um, you know, I could just, I guess I could just do that. Why don't, why don't I just add a plane instead? I'll add a... Um, I'll add a plane, which I'm not sure why that's a 3D object, but but there it is. And then maybe I can I'll grab the little scale gizmo up here, and now I can you know I could scale this thing up, or I, I can go up into the transform and you know maybe scale it up 100, 100, 100 or something. Uh, that's pretty huge. Uh, 50, even that's pretty huge. 25, 25, um, and then scaling on the the or sorry the scaling on the Y is not going to do anything. Um, so there's a there's a plane. Maybe that's is that enough space? I don't know. I guess we'll we'll see once we get the character controller in there. So there's a plane, and then we're not going to need our main camera here. So let's just delete it. And now if we actually try to run this thing, we'll just see a black screen because there's no camera in the um, in the game. There's there's our there's our game view. We don't have a camera, so we'll have to go add one. Okay, so there's our plane. Now let's go add in our uh, first person player controller. Right? So that's going to be somewhere in our prefabs. So let's go find in our assets. Um, hmm. Oh wait, there we go. Prefabs. Do we have a first person controller? A FPS controller. There we go. FPS. Let's drag our FPS controller into our scene. And let's double click on that. And then you can see that a lot of times the uh, character controller gets placed in the ground. So if I run this, <coughs> excuse me, um, if I run this, the character will actually just fall straight through the ground and that that's not going to be good. So if I do this and I run this thing, we will see like, wait, where's the, where's the terrain? We actually that we're falling and the terrain is, oh, are we? I don't know. Maybe we're not falling. I think, I think we're actually okay. Yeah, we're running around on the ground. Um, let's look at our scene view here. So maybe we popped up out of the ground, but what I'm going to do is just raise the character capsule out of the ground there. Okay, so now we've got a um, first person character controller in our scene. And then let's just kind of pretty this up a little bit by adding a texture onto this plane and then by throwing a, a skybox in here. And then, then I mean, even actually this terrain is still pretty enormous. Let me go down here and what if I just scale this to be like, you know, five and five. Um, what does that do for me? Oops. Uh, maybe that looks too small. How about 10 and 10? Okay, that looks reasonable. And then where's our character controller? Is our character controller now off of the board? Yes, the character controller is now off of the board. So let me move the character controller onto the board. There we go, kind of in the center, maybe. Okay, so there's our FPS controller. Now we have kind of a reasonable amount of, of terrain to play with. Neat. All right. So let's get a skybox in here. And the skybox was in the um, uh, in the lighting. So let's go find the lighting window. And um, we've got all sky. Um, I'm sure there's something useful in there. Uh, is it rendering? Rendering. There we go. Rendering, lighting settings. And then we have a skybox material. We can, so we need to find our skybox material and drag it in there. So let's go find a skybox. And actually, if, if, if we look in prefabs, do we have any skyboxes? No. How about materials? If we look in materials, you can see we've got some skyboxes. What if I take a skybox? Can I drag it up there? Ooh, now I have a nice kind of like... Um, that looks pretty cool. Um, what, else have, what else have I got? That looks pretty good, too. So you can just kind of pick, pick whatever skybox you want. And now when we run this thing... Um, we should see, now we've got a, a cool skybox. Our terrain still seems pretty massive. Um, 
Now, what else what are, are we going to do? Let's get some textures uh, on this terrain. And uh, so, so this is not um, a, ter a terrain object. It's just a plane. So we don't have that terrain gizmo where we can go in and kind of raise and lower stuff. I'm just, if you want that, that's great. Then just add terrain. And you know how to do that from, um, from the terrain project. But let's go in here and let's find some, whoops. Because um, we imported that, here, ground materials pack. Why don't I go do that? You know, I could say, uh, what about, you know, dry ground or something? What's in there? Can I, no, if the, this, the material here is the circular one. There we go. I can just drag that onto the plane. And now when I run that, oh, look, I'm running around on the dry ground. All right, that's pretty cool. Or I think, you know, we could have lava or something like that. So if you land on the lava, maybe you die. You could do it that way. I'm going to just type lava in the little search window. I remember seeing a lava material. There you go. So maybe if you touch the lava, you die. You can make it whatever you want. Or if you want to have like stone or something, we've got um, stone textures pack. There's all sorts of stuff in there. Let's go find what, what's, what other materials do we have? Oh, you can see the metals. We've got the metals in there. The metals are really cool. Um, it, um, but if you know, you want to have like stone on your ground, just drag the you know drag a different material on there. You just pl just play around, find find something you like. All right, so there we go. Now we've got uh, a sky, and we have. Um, and we've got some uh, some ground, so that is that is good. So, all right, let's add some platforms now for the player to stand on and jump around on. And I've scaled my terrain down to be five five by five. I just what I'm going to do at the very end is I'm going to put some kind of stone walls or metal walls around the outside of the terrain, and that way the player is not going to see the edge of the world. Like the player just kind of shouldn't see the the ground ending like you know like flat earth style and then kind of going off into nothing the player really shouldn't should never see the boundary so at the very end just to make this kind of aesthetically pleasing maybe we'll put in some tall walls around um, the board around the, the play area to keep the player from kind of seeing the edge of the world so how do we make a platform that the player is going to stand on well if I just go up to the game object menu what I can do is add a cube so let's put a cube in the scene here and then let's let's scale the cube if I double click on the cube here now you'll see I'll kind of zoom in on the cube let's scale the cube here to be um, like really kind of not very tall so that would be in the y direction what if I change it from 1 to be like 0.1 now it's kind of skinny like that and then maybe I want it to be a little bit you know, bigger. Maybe I want it to be two, two by two or something, or two by one, right? But now I've got like a platform. You can see that the platform is kind of above the, you can tell by the shadow, the platform's kind of above the terrain there. And now what I can do is I can take one of these cool metal textures. It's got like, it's got like kind of a transparent thing going on it. And you now let me find one of those that I like. I like this one right here. And let me drag that onto that platform. And you'll see now it is now a transparent platform that looks pretty slick now is this thing solid I don't know how do we find out well we need to look to see if it has a box collider and it does indeed have a box collider so I should be able to put the player on this platform and then the player uh, will actually stay there so let's how do I put the player on this platform well it's actually pretty easy I mean I could go and drag the controller or the you know all over the place and try to get it right but watch this trick if I take the FPS controller and drag it onto. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to rename the thing. I'm just, instead of cube, I'm just I'm going to call it platform. You do not want everything in your game named like cube one, cube two, cube three. That's a disaster. Uh, then let me take the FPS controller and drag it onto the platform over here on the left, so that it is a child of the platform. And then over here in the transform, I will set it to be the the. Um, with the player selected, I want to set the position to be 0, 0, 0. And you'll see now, what that means is the player's position is 0, 0, 0 away from its parent, and its parent is the platform. So what I can do now is, you know, maybe I'll raise the player capsule up a little bit, and then I will take the, the FPS controller and I will drag it off of the platform. So now it's a top-level object again. And you'll see now it's got real-world coordinates. It's got coordinates that are relative to the world, not relative to the platform anymore. So now if I run this thing, I should actually be on the platform. 
and you'll see now I'm standing on the platform. And um, can I move around? Yes. Now I, nuts, I can't get, oh yeah, well, ugh, I'm trying to get back up there, but it's not working. All right, so, you know, now what we can do is, now we can start cloning these things and trying to turn them, you know, into something like an obstacle course. And to do that, I can just right click on a um, platform and I can say duplicate, you know, and I can start dragging them around, maybe raising them up a little bit. I can start tilting them. And now I'm going to end up with something, um, you know, that the, that the player is going to have to, to navigate to get back up. All right, so there, now we've, now we've got some platforms. Now we've got some potential here. And you can make the platforms out of stone too, or you can make the platforms whatever you want. So, um, you know, um, just just make, be cool and creative, have fun with it. So I think we're, we're good there. So in the next video, what I'm gonna do is show you how to get the respawn box going so that when the player falls off of the platform, they're gonna end up back, uh, or they fall off any of the platforms, they'll kind of end up back at a starting location. So there'll be kind of like a checkpoint mechanic going on. So they'll kind of land in some invisible box and when they do they'll get taken back to the kind of the the check the checkpoint or the start point point for that particular uh, zone that they they fell into. So there you go. I mean, what are we we've been working on this for like 20 minutes and already we're kind of jumping around and it looks pretty All right. Awesome. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video where we start writing just a little bit of code. Not too much. Don't panic. Just a little bit of code.